This is a video about how to interpret your pathology report after prostatectomy. There are three things that you're gonna find out on the pathology report. The first is the actual Gleason score. The second is the T stage, or whether it's contained, bulging, or spread, and the status of the margins. And I'm gonna explain all three of these. Let's start with the actual Gleason score. Now you may say, what do you mean? I already know the Gleason score from my biopsy. Well, on the biopsy, the pathologist is looking at a tiny sliver of tissue from a needle sample. Now they have the entire prostate to look at. So they'll have more to look at and they'll be able to tell you one single score that represents the actual Gleason score. And this can change between the biopsy and what we call the final pathologic Gleason score. Sometimes the score stays the same, sometimes it goes down, sometimes it goes up. Then we're gonna find out the T stage. Was the cancer contained, bulging, or did it spread? Let's use this cartoon as a diagram to review the anatomy. This is a view from the side with the body sliced down the middle. So the penis is in the front, the rectum is right here, this is the bladder, this is the prostate, the urethra channel runs right through the prostate out the penis. This is the seminal vesicle. And this is the whole prostate. Cancers that are contained, the cancers represented here in green, are completely in bounds. Never goes outside that outer line, which is called the capsule of the prostate. This is called stage two. If the cancer uh, is bulging outside the surface of the prostate. That's all it takes to be considered stage three. Contained bulging or stage three. The other way it can be bulging is into the seminal vesicle itself. This situation is called T3A and this is called T3B. Now what about spread? Your surgeon may sample some lymph nodes nearby and the pathologist is trying to determine did the prostate cancer spread to those lymph nodes. Now while I'm showing you all of this in a picture while the cancer was still inside your body, you have to imagine that this is all the pathologist sees. Your prostate with the seminal vesicles attached and a few lymph nodes that were sampled. So in this context, the pathologist is examining was the cancer contained? Was it bulging? Was it spreading into the sem was it bulging into the seminal vesicles? And did it make it to the lymph nodes? The pathologist can only examine what the surgeon hands them. So to review so far, we're going to find out what the actual Gleason score is. What the T stage is, is it contained, bulging, or spread? And then we're going to find out what the margins are. So let me explain margins. To understand margins, I'm going to show you the anatomy from a different view. Earlier, we were looking from the side. Here, we're looking from above. This is the bladder. This is the prostate. This is the urethra. And in green, these are the neurovascular bundles, which are responsible for erectile function running along both sides of the prostate like curved railroad tracks. This is an example of stage two contained cancer. And this is an example of stage three bulging cancer called extra capsular extension. Whether you have this situation or this is just the cancer card that you were dealt. This is the biology of the cancer, which the surgeon cannot control. What the surgeon can control is the dotted line along which they're going to do the surgery on each side. And this has to do with nerve sparing. So for example, if the surgeon cuts along this inner path, hugging the prostate capsule, they will save the nerve. They will keep that green line inside you and the prostate will come out with nothing covering it. If they take this wide path here, 
that's a non-nerve sparing plane, that green nerve will be taken out with the prostate and will be covering it. And then there's many shades of gray in between where the surgeon takes this, what we call partial nerve sparing plane. Now think about this in terms of what the pathologist sees. If you do a non-nerve sparing on this side, this, this is what the specimen will look like to the pathologist, a prostate with all of the neurovascular tissue stuck to the prostate, covering it on the right side. If they do a partial nerve sparing, it'll look like this. And if they do a nerve sparing, it'll look just like a bare prostate. Now, the margin is simply the outer limits of what the pathologist sees. As soon as the pathologist re receives the specimen, they paint it with blue ink. And that blue line from that point forward, when they look under the microscope and they see it, that's the outer limit of the whole specimen that they received. So in a non-nerve sparing specimen, that's the outer margin. In a partial nerve sparing, that's the outer margin. In a nerve sparing, that's the outer margin. Whatever the true edge of what was given to the pathologist is marked in blue. So if the cancer is contained, the margin will be negative, meaning cancer never touches blue, no matter what the surgeon did for nerve sparing, right? Because the cancer in this patient is so far to the interior there's no way the margin could be positive, no matter what was done with nerve sparing. If the biology of the cancer was that it touched the capsule of the prostate, if the surgeon did a nerve sparing, the margin will be positive, meaning cancer touches blue. If a partial nerve sparing or non-nerve sparing, the margin will be negative. Cancer doesn't touch blue. If the patient has stage three cancer and it's bulging through the capsule, as long as the surgeon takes a slightly wider path, that margin will be negative. In this case, the margin is positive, And in this case, the margin is significantly positive. Now the question is, what's the significance? The answer is sometimes we can't tell except with time. So for example, here there's a positive margin, but that's as far as the cancer went. In this scenario, some of that cancer is probably still inside the patient. Look at it a different way. When we see a positive margin, we ask ourselves, is that where the cancer ended? Or in which case the patient is still going to be cured? Or is there still some cancer left inside, meaning a little crescent of prostate cancer cells is still in the patient. That's the sort of unknown when we have a positive margin. We don't always know if that's the extent of it, that's as far as it went, but it touched the edge, or it was the tip of the iceberg and some microscopic cancer cells are still inside. So the pathology report tells us the final Gleason score, whether the cancer was biologically contained, bulging, or spread, and then did the cancer touch the blue line anywhere? Now, as far as the significance of all of this, were you cured by surgery or will you need additional treatment? We can't always tell with the pathology report. A combination of the pathology report and your first postoperative PSA and sometimes some additional genomic testing is needed to put all the pieces together to decide, do we think we got it all or should we give additional treatment, for example, with radiation? I hope this was useful to you and answered much of your questions.